Welcome to the No BS Tour of the CMMI for Development. This is a series of short videos that explain in a common sense way what the CMMI is about, how it's structured, why it's useful, and the elements of the model. In the last segments, we looked at what the process areas generally cover and how each is constructed, as well as the benefits of implementing the model effectively. Let's broaden our view and see how the set of process areas is organized. That way we can start to make some sense of the model. Because the model is for reference, there are two ways to represent or view it. You can think about improving the organization as a series of stages of maturity, or you can look at the process areas individually and implement the ones that most directly address the company needs at the time. The first and most common way is to view the model as a series of developmental stages of maturity or maturity levels. It's called the staged representation. There are five levels of maturity, each of which represents an organizational plateau of overall capability. Each stage has a predefined set of process areas assigned to it for cohesive implementation and results. Within a maturity level, process areas are categorized into four categories. The project management and engineering categories are obvious, and they're augmented by process areas that support those two domains, as well as process management areas designed to provide the infrastructure needed for use across the organization. Here are the process areas assigned to maturity level two. As a set, they represent getting control over a project and setting up a measurement focus for collecting historical data for improvement. The reality is that good engineering gets done in ad hoc organizations, but projects are not consistent or repeatable. So the first order of business is to bring some discipline to the project to support the engineering. At maturity level three, we can bring in the engineering process areas since projects now support the engineering activities. And we can start to characterize our work and standardize some of it. Putting in place a disciplined way of managing risks and making decisions helps strengthen project performance and sets the stage for better and more consistent metrics. Maturity levels four and five tend to blur in practice. Once we have enough data to work with, we can better quantify our standard processes, identify causes for failures in process and product, control our projects with real-time data, and streamline from there as improvement is a continuing activity. Now the second way of viewing the model, choosing a subset of process areas to work on, is called the continuous representation. This view exists because not all organizations want or need to attain a maturity level, because not all organizations do their own work, outsourcing instead, and because some organizations want to solve some immediate problems before going further in their improvement initiative. In the continuous representation, we talk about the capability of a process area rather than the maturity of a set of process areas working together. Both views work and they complement each other. And since the generic goals and practices apply to each process area, we can define levels of capability individually and also across a set. Since we're talking about levels, it's important to know that levels are defined by the generic goals and practices and that levels can't be skipped. Each builds on the one before it. Level one is fundamentally about doing the work, those specific practices we talked about earlier. Level two is about managing the work that you're doing. Work that is managed should be authorized by some sort of policy statement or directive, have a plan for going about it, have the resources needed to do the work, and someone assigned to actually do it. Those doing the work ought to know how to do it, exercise some control over what they build and any documentation used to build it, make sure that key stakeholders are involved or at least know what's going on, and manage against the plan for the work. The work ought to be reviewed objectively from time to time to make sure that what we promised is what we're delivering, both with respect to the product we're building and the way we're going about it. And finally, management ought to have some insight into how things are going. Level three is a managed process that now enables the organization to learn from all the project's experiences. By this time, there are usually some standard processes and approaches to doing and managing work in place and ways to modify them for specific project needs. And the projects are gathering data and learning that's available to other projects and the organization for overall improvement. This is when projects can now benefit not just from their own experience, but that of other projects as well. And that's powerful.
So the process areas are pretty logically oriented and show several potential paths for improvement based on the organization's needs. We can see how the PAs are organized by maturity level and also how capability levels within a process area and maturity